I made a lot of pictures with ordinary Swedish directors. I made about four every year until 1953. And Ingmar Bergman was, he had just started this picture, The Naked Night, which was also called Sodas and Tinsel. So I went over to uh, the set and it was a little circus wagon, very, very small. But he placed the camera as slow as he could on the track. And then I should make a very quick tracking in his face, end up like that. He takes up a, a gun or a pistol. I should pan up, fill the whole screen with his pistol. But then he shoots. And as soon as I see that this fire come out, I should pan 180 degrees. <laughs> It was just a test. <laughs> I have understood that later. So the, the most difficult shots I made in 1953. <laughs> he was checking your spirit. He was checking, yes. And I, I, I still uh, was able to look in his eyes. But after that, uh, we didn't work for um, four or five years. It was not because of uh, that we had any difficulties. We really started to like each other very much. But then suddenly when Ingmar should start with a picture called uh, uh, Virgin Spring, then he asked me to take over Gunnar Fischer's job. He had been working for him for 12 pictures, I think, and. He's a big artist and wonderful cameraman. In Virgin Spring, we had a wonderful collaboration, and the next picture was Through a Glass Darkly. And still, I was in that kind of artificial studio light. And then uh, suddenly, Ingvar started to be very tired of this, and then he said one day, you know, next picture, that will be a picture called Winter Light, and that will be in a church between 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock on a Sunday. And it's moody, and we shall not have any shadows at all in the, in the picture. And I am sure that we must find a new style of lighting and forget all these lamps up on the bridges and so on. So we went up for a whole month up to the north of Sweden and started to study the lighting in, in the churches between 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock. And I took pictures with uh, my Leica and took every fifth minute. And it, it was so interesting because the light changes so many times because of the clouds outside and so on. And in all his pictures, he... he himself is so interested in lighting because he's a stage director and in the as a stage director he makes his light himself so we st were up there and, and studied lighting for a very long time and discussed lighting that was the first time even if i had been cinematographer for about 15 years i start uh, I, I started to think about light i'm sh ashamed to say that but it was like that and we couldn't shoot a picture in the uh, church because that was so bad sound. So we built it in the studio. And uh, I asked the production designer to make ceilings everywhere so I should not have any possibility at all to put up light for backlighting <laughs> and so on. And I just started with having this uh, bounce light from outside and no light inside at all. And I think that was 62 or something like that. <coughs> I also operated, so I could not always see if it was a tiny little shadow. But we had two or three electricians who always looked if they saw any shadow. It was a, a very good picture, I must say, and Ingmar thinks that is one of his best pictures. 
Then we understood how important it was to have all these preparations. So for the next picture, I think that was Persona. We asked the whole crew. We went up to the town in the north of Sweden two months before we started the picture. And uh, we stayed for three days, and the meaning was to understand the script. And the whole session started with uh, what Ingmar, the reason why he was making that picture, and uh, what he wanted that it should look like, and so on. And everyone has the possibility to interrupt. How shall we do that? What do you mean by that? And so on, and so on. I had a, a small group and made tests on all uh, walls, makeup tests, special effects tests, and so on. And that went on for two months. When we started the picture, we really didn't have to talk about the setups. We knew exactly what we wanted. Earlier, we had used 60, 65 days to shoot a picture. Now we used only 35 days. We had made the sets in the studio. And uh, even if you have been working for 15 pictures together, it takes time to meet again and uh, discuss and to feel the same. Because everyone, the first week, is very, very nervous. And they, they don't play well. And then I was nervous, and everyone was nervous. Then we had been shooting for three weeks, and we were not happy with the first week. So we decided to reshoot the first week. And we very often do that, because first, after one week, the actors have come into their roles. And we are not any longer shy for each other, and, and so on. But then when we came to um, for uh, this island where we have been shooting, and then, of course, we found out how much we could play with, I mean, the nature outside and with uh, people coming through doors and uh, scenery outside at the same time as we have it inside and, and, and so on. So then we started to reshoot the whole uh, picture. And then we also started to love these uh, uh, magic hour shots where we had uh, kerosene lamps, sometimes close-ups with the kerosene lamps, and then the sun or sunset or magic hour outside. And in a through a glass darkly, which we did before, that two-thirds of that picture is shot in uh, magic hour. That was only, that time it was only one hour of uh, magic hour. We shot ordinary scenes between nine o'clock to two o'clock. Then we stopped. Then we started to rehearse all the magic hour shots and worked very hard with that for three hours. And we knew every setup and every light and everything. And then uh, we had dinner between five and six, and then everyone went to their positions. And there we were just standing, waiting. And the only thing, they just looked at me because I just looked at a spot meter and see when the light was exactly the same as the day before. Hmm. And then I just said, now it's time. And then everyone started to work like hell for half an hour. Edgar är den enda psykiatriker som jag litar på. Han har haft hand om en hela tid. No. I must tell you a story about Crash and Whispers, which is one of my favorite pictures. We had just finished Touch, and we were not very satisfied with the picture. And then he said, for years I have always seen just one image, and I see a big room, a castle with red walls, because he meant that uh, the soul is red. And uh, 
he sees three white women in the big room and uh, they are waiting for something and he doesn't know what they are waiting for but then he said Sad, perhaps uh, their sister um, dying or something like that and then he said do you think we can make a picture about that and I said, well, I don't think that anyone can make a picture about it, but I think that you can do it, I said. <laughs> okay, say, if, okay, said, if you believe in me, then I will call you in two months. It's Thursday today. Uh, in two months at five o'clock, please stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> at five o'clock, I will call you. And, of course, I was waiting for that. Five o'clock, two months later, he called me and said, Sven, I did it. You will have the script tomorrow and see, then we will see if we can make it. That was the beginning of Cries and Whispers. Uh, we have always talked about making a picture in, in black and white, and the meaning was that a serpent's egg should be made in, in, in black and white. But all the producers, as you know, they, at least in Europe, they say no, because then they say, they say that we can't sell it to television. Let And then uh, we didn't know how we should do about life of marionettes because we really, really uh, wanted to shoot that in black and white. So we uh, made it like this. We just put black and white in the camera. And after I've been shooting a week, we send a telegram to, uh, to the producer and uh, Ingmar just wrote, Sven and I have decided to shoot this picture in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> wurde durch eine weiche, gedämpfte Morgendämmerung ersetzt. We, we made it in uh, Norway, in Oslo, in the smallest studio I've ever seen. While they were building the setup in Norway, for three weeks, we had just Lee Wörlman, Ingrid Bergman, Ingmar, me, and the continuity girl making rehearsals. They were discussing the picture, they played the scene, and I was always going around looking for camera angles and so on. We rehearsed it from nine o'clock to three o'clock in the evening, every day for three weeks. So when we came up to Oslo and found the sets and the f exactly the same uh, furniture and so on, it was just to start. And the only thing they had to do, that was to wait for my lighting. And uh, of course I thought that Ingrid Bergman should ask, always used with stand in and so on for the lighting. But Lee, Lee Wollman has never had a stand-in. So Ingrid said, OK, if Lee doesn't have any stand-in, I don't want to have a stand-in. That was made in 36 days. And we did not work any overtime. We started at 8.30 every morning. And they were actors were terribly afraid if they came two minutes after 8.30, because that is the punctuality so high. And then Ingmar and I, we had lunch together always, and then we went to sleep in for 40 minutes. And then we started to work again, and always finished seven minutes before five. So all the boys have time to wash their hands before they go home. Perhaps it's silly to talk so much about Ingmar Bergman, I know that. But he is the one who really have learned me so much not about lighting and other things. He has learned me so much about organization and everything. We became such a wonderful team. 